How did you discover auto-tune? Because I'm going to be honest with you. What's the guy's name? Roger Chapman. Uh, Roger Chapman. Right. Um, he used it in a totally different He wasn't the first. That was Talkbox. Huh? That's a completely different That's thing. That's a completely different thing. Okay. He used Talkbox. So okay. that was like, you got to learn how to fucking play keys and, you know, you got to play That's the That's the shit. analog version. Right. What are you celebrating? Hey, man, you. <laughs> right. We celebrating you, motherfucker. He's motherfucking Gizzly, baby. Come on. So, you know, so how did you, all right. So how did you um, get, 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 so what, what was you? Just, in the studio, so, no, I was fucking. It was a fucking commercial. It's a goddamn commercial. Uh, Dark Dark Child used it on a, a Jennifer the, Lopez producer, remix. Dark yeah, yeah, producer Dark Child used it on a Jennifer Lopez remix, and I heard it for like two seconds. I'm like, I gotta find out what that is because I want to use it on a whole song. Right. You know what's funny? That's how I got introduced. Told, told about Auto Tune huh? was Jennifer Lopez. Somebody said that, that they. I was. Um, in an engineer, I was in, I was with an engineer, mm-hmm. engineer, and he he told me he said, "Listen, this is what I got to do for Jennifer Lo- Lopez right. vocals." So I didn't know. I thought it was just some singing shit. Now, you like like <laughs> you took it, and now everybody like I took it and used it how it wasn't supposed to be used. Well, you said you right. heard the share record. Was that that's after? I didn't hear the share. Oh, record. you didn't? No, I hadn't heard the share record up uh-huh. until that point. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Once I found it, then people started saying, you know, Cher did this, right. and then, then I heard Kanye use it, like, before right. my shit came out. I right. used it before Kanye, but Kanye's use of it came out before mine. Right, right. So it was uh, a ton of people who had used it, and nobody right. was able to influence a generation. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So it was... It was it was highly sought after. Well, everybody it, was using it. Er, nobody but was just using not it. not at the level that you used it. Right. Exactly. Right. And, and even, the, even the people that did, like Kanye... Did it on a bunch of interludes on College Dropout. And mm-hmm. I heard that, I'm like, oh, that's the shit I'd be using. Right. And then it still wasn't able to influence a generation until I got involved with 808s and Heartbreaks. And then, right. mm. then now everybody's like, oh, I got it from God. Now, is performing right. auto tune harder? Huh? Is, when you perform, do you perform in auto tune? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Never use auto tune okay. live. Never use, okay. Because the thing about auto tune, it only can process one voice at a time. Wow. So if you're performing with it and you're singing, but also 20,000 people are also so singing, it's, it goes to different. No, it fucks up your oh, own auto tune. It's going to auto tune everything. It's trying to auto tune right, right, right. 20,000 right, voices right. at one time. Right. But auto tune is only able to, to do one at a time. So I never use it live. I make sure I do everything I do live uh, is, uh, is auto tune free because it just sounds fucking stupid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, oh boy, that's that was. Three days of that. Wow. Rolling loud. Wow. Just all performing with all the time. Just everybody. So three days of that sound. And it was just I, I don't I don't know how motherfuckers could listen to that. That was crazy. I'm so glad T Pain talked about this. I'm so glad he went into this. You know, a lot of people you know, I gotta frame this, right? I know I don't like dating the videos, but I'm going to do this. This video is being filmed on Tuesday, September 7th, 2021 at 10.02 p.m. And in the past couple of weeks, we had two of the biggest artists in the world, Drake and Kanye West, drop albums. Drake dropped Certified Lover Boy. Kanye West dropped Donda. And it's been a while since we've had two juggernauts drop around the same time, and they were so intertwined. And because of that, I realized how many people don't know anything about the music business yet they act like they do they don't know anything about the music industry they act like they do they don't know anything about how to make music yet they act like they do and for those of us who this is what we do we make music we make videos we make content we are creatives that's rooted in the music business it's extremely annoying when y'all don't know nothing or sitting here talking like you do you don't know shit so I'm glad that T-Pain talks about this because everybody's talking about all you gotta do is put out tune on and you'll be dope no no it's not how it works i know it seems like that but that's not how it works at all so i'm gonna give you three things you should take away from this video watch the entire video so you can see all three before you do that hit like hit share write a comment save follow and subscribe my ducks my swans welcome to the pond my name is Dorian from GroupHCUniversity.com and right here we got T-Pain exposing his music industry secret auto-tune. No fluff, straight to the point. Number one, you gotta break rules. You hear what T-Pain said? He said that auto-tune had been out for a while, but he was the first person to use it like how he did. If you're gonna be in the music business, you gotta be a disruptor. 
You're going to be a new artist. You got to shake things up and be creative. It's the only way people pay attention to you. You think I'm playing? Go look at Tupac, Biggie. Go look at N.W.A., Death Row, Jay-Z, Nelly, Ludacris, T.I., Jeezy, 50 Cent, Eminem, Drake, Kendrick, Cole, Outkast, Nicki, Cardi. The list goes on. They all had a very unique value proposition, so they were able to cut through because they were breaking rules. T-Pain had to find a way to separate himself from everybody else, and we're going to talk about that a little later in the video. He couldn't use auto-tune like everybody else did. He couldn't use it like Roger Troutman did the talk box and all these other people. He had to find a way to separate himself, so he used it wrong quote unquote because you weren't supposed to do it for an entire song but he changed popular music by doing that twitter the way they got founded was they were like this long form blog platform that was going to focus on twit pics or something like that they would communicate with each other during the development process with 160 characters and they realized that they liked doing that so much as opposed to what they were working on i don't even think it was twit pic i think i just made that up but it was working on something else and they decided man 160 characters really stands out why don't we just Talk on that. Develop Twitter. Twitter bought a company called Periscope. Those y'all used to follow me on there. Y'all know that's how I got started on social media. Periscope was supposed to be an app where you're showing people what you're doing with the camera facing out. Well, what we did is we tapped twice and we turned the camera around and we made it like a podcast vlogging platform and Periscope didn't know what to do neither because we were breaking the rules and they basically went under because of this. The people who are going to be innovative, you got to break rules first. That's exactly what T-Pain did here. So think about it your career, your industry, whatever you do, how can you break rules to disrupt the status quo? Second thing I want you to take away from this video is that even though we got all these tools, you still need talent. We got engineers, we got AI, we got all types of technology that can really make you sound like Michael Jackson or Tupac or whomever you want. But at the end of the day, you still need talent, man. Don't nobody want to sit there and listen to a robot. Even though these voices are getting to the point where we ain't gonna be able to tell the difference right now, ain't nobody trying to hear that. And even with that, there has to be some sort of human element because humans are the ones that are listening to the music although we're gonna have robot created music which we already do essentially but at a much higher level humans still have to consume it so there has to be something that connects the human with the original artist and when that artist is just a robot ain't nothing there but when that artist has a story that artist has emotions that artist has feelings there's something that can be connected to there therefore you need to use all these tools to get your talent out there to connect with people sometimes we get a little bit too dependent on plugins and effects and all that which ain't nothing wrong with that like i said in the first point ain't no rules so be as creative as you want to be but Remember, you still got to have something that's going to make you connect with the humans on the other end that are consuming. And three, the final point I told you I would talk about is that when everyone else is doing it, you need to separate yourself. T-Pain brought up a really good point. He understood the pros and cons of auto-tune. You could tell he really studied it. He never used it live, which is a shock to me because I've seen him live in Vegas at Dre's and he had that thing turned all the way up back in 2015. But T-Pain doesn't perform live with auto-tune because what he just said, it can only process one voice at a time. So if all these people are talking, and all this input is coming to the microphone is going to sound terrible. So he still had to showcase his talent, even though everybody else who started to use auto-tune after him was performing with it, kind of using it as like a crutch. He said he wanted nothing to do with that. You got to find ways to give yourself a value proposition. You got to find ways to make yourself stand out from the crowd. Inside the music business, you got to know how to market your stuff in order to do all that. If you don't know how to market your music, ain't nobody going to hear you. So it's like you don't even exist, which is why the first class we offer how to market your music on social media, which is why we got payment plans where you can pay one payment right now you can spread the rest of them out over the next two months with you and paypal so what you need to do is click that link on instagram up top and enroll in how to market your music on social media class at group a2university.com you on youtube and you click that same link in the box and get in the class now i'm out the pod y'all stay true scroll 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 Group82University.com.